Happy Friday! Woo! Happy Friday <laughs> summer. It's it looks summertime. Like summer. Yeah, you look like I'm you crispy have fried. You look like you have been in the summer. Oh, my favorite thing is the first time of the year that I get crispy fried. I'm there like, we go. Oh, We're yes. ready. Sunshine. It's fantastic. I love sunshine. It's Every, like I'm a whole other person. I guess my mom named me right. Summer. Summer. Yeah, kind of like that's a real problem. If your name's Summer, you pretty much are beholden to having to like summer. Yeah, you know, it never was my favorite season. It was always fall, but I don't know. I think I'm just like addicted to sun or vitamin D or something. Did you grow up wanting to be called Autumn? No. Okay, good. Mm -mm. No, I like my name because it's weird. (laughs) The summer part's not weird, but, you know, my whole name is weird. But, uh, no, I like my name. There's not a lot of summers. There you go. But, no, it was never my favorite. But everybody's like, is that your favorite season? Like, I somehow picked it myself when I was born. You know? And I'm like, nope, it's not. I didn't get asked uh, in the beginning. Your mom did say, Yeah, she didn't consult me. (laughs) Listen, baby. One kick for winter. Two kicks for spring. Three kicks for summer. I don't know. I forget. I think she had another girl name, maybe, for, like, another girl. Because I have a brother who's younger than me. So, I don't know what the other name was. I could be something. Could probably be. Heather. It's probably Heather. Because my whole true. life, everyone called me Heather. Still, people uh, look at me and call me Heather. I don't know why. I don't know. Either. Long lost. I have a doppelganger. There you go. You're so, about Malachi. <laughs> Let's go. Speaking of doppelgangers. Let's go. Not even Malachi. Really relevant. Yeah, we were in chapter three. Yeah. Uh, we, I said, I declared at the end of the video that we were going to finish it. All right, let's so do it. So we have to finish it. All right. Have to at least read it. All right, let's do it. I think we ended with verse 12. So I'll read it at 13. Okay. All right, Malachi 3, guys. Last book, Old Testament, in case you're lost. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken so much against thee? You have said... It is vain to serve God, and what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him, for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. <sighs> yeah. Did you say we were going to get through three? Is that what you meant? Yeah, well, the whole well listen, time. we read it. No, I, I did not say we were going to complete chapter four. Good, good, good. I said we were going to finish chapter three, I think. I hope I didn't say chapter four. No, I said maybe we'll read chapter four. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, there's a lot in here. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, again, like, I'm very, I'm stuck on 15. I know I'm skipping, but uh, they call the proud happy that, you know, they that work wickedness are set up. They that tempt God are even delivered. I, again, like I read all these things and I'm like, oh yeah, right, that's right now, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just, um, uh, yep. Well, I think part We've of, never changed. Yeah. Just like right, we said the last time, like God knows people. Yeah, this is exactly, uh, this is exactly where I find myself at times, right? So this isn't a non-Christian thing. This is a, yeah. even a Christian thing, right? We look around us and we say, God, uh, what's the profit of our keeping your charge? Yeah. Walking in mourning with before the Lord hosts. What, what, what's the purpose? It is right? vain to serve God. It, it, it matters because God says up above, listen, you're, you're, you have been hard against me, says the Lord. Yeah. But you say, how have we spoken against you? Right. So again, it's I don't think sometimes we recognize... Right? Like, I am so guilty of this, and, and now I'm going to have self-conviction, so we could probably just end right now. <laughs> no way. <Right? laughs> but how many times are we asking for affirmation, reaffirmation? Tell me again, Lord, the, the promises. Tell me again that you love me. Tell me again that you need me. Tell me again that you're going to use me. Tell me again you got a plan for me. Yeah. Tell me again. Show me again. Show me, show me, show me, show me again. And part of that is because of verse 14. 
because I look around and I see reality, mm-hmm. my reality, right. which is, you know what, all these people who are selling themselves out and who are doing all this other stuff or who are compromising, marginalizing, who are saying sin's not sin, all these things, look at what they're building. Look at what yeah. they have. Yeah, well, and it just looks like they're getting away with it. And it's like, you know, mine says, um, stout, your word, he said, your words have been stout against me or arrogant. Yeah. Right? And I, I feel like, yeah, like, like you were saying, it's convicting because we're looking for like affirmation and things. But like, there's multiple parts to this. Like, there's like, you, you hear how some people, like, okay, I, I've heard you talk to God many times. I don't mm-hmm. think you're arrogant in how you talk to God. Now, maybe you do that in your barn. I don't know. But, <laughs> but like, I don't feel arrogance out of you when you're just constantly asking for affirmation. I feel like it's more just insecurity or, like, you know, maybe doubt even. But I don't see pride out of that. I see that. But we have this other part that, that people do of this arrogance when they talk to God of, like, like he is just a man yeah. right yeah. or he's just he's just like us or he's not god like you know what i mean this arrogance of like i know mm-hmm. and this pride of like well we just know how this goes and we know mm-hmm. everything and you know we were talking about other parts you know the bible and, and talking about like all this you know human robot transhumanism the, the yeah, angels the angels exactly. and the humans and all the things and all the ways that we just know better yeah Yep. Like, even even if take the robots out of the equation, that's crazy, right? Well, wait a year, guys. Um, but, like, even just with, like, how many people have we recently, in the last week, mm-hmm. hey, I'm sick, I have this disease. And, yep. b- like, before you can even know how to respond, they're telling you the treatment plan. Yep, yep. It's like, well, how do you know that already? Like, what, did you ask God? Yeah. Like, like, we skip God. Mm-hmm. Because of our arrogance and our pride and our, well, here's how we fix it. Here's how we, here's how we fix it. Here's the plan we made up. We yep. made up. Did did God create the medical system? Now you could say, well, God made everything. Okay, but God did not, like, create all of these things, right? Yep. Now, does God allow them and use them and sanction them and ordain them sometimes? Sure. Yeah. But that doesn't mean, like, he invented the treatment plan for cancer. Like, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, I'm we just... convicted about that, too. We so. just have this arrogance, right? And then, and then, when all of our crap fails... <laughs> then we go to God. Then we go to God. Yeah. Oh, oh, by the way, by then, we're mad at him. Because right. he didn't just roll out of the sky on a cloud and save us. And, like, but you never asked. Yep. You never cared what he thought. Yeah. Maybe he was going to fix you and you'd go back to the doctor and he'd say, oh, well, it's gone. We read your test wrong. Mm-hmm. You have no idea. But you didn't ask him. And, like, by the time we do, we go to him with this arrogant, like, well, you should do this. Because cause at that point then, after all this stuff fails, well, now I'm quoting scripture and, by your stripes, I'm healed. So, yeah. come on, God. So That's what I see. Oh like, with the stout and the arrogance here that they're talking about. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, well, why even bother? Why, why? It's vain to serve God. Why bother? Because I don't get what I want. Yeah, I mean, there, you just said a lot, a lot of stuff right there. Right? <laughs> Sorry. A lot of stuff. It's like you just, <laughs> That's what I got out of that. It's like going to the cupboard and just throwing it all on the table <laughs> rather than taking it out piece by piece. So you, uh, what you said was, was fantastic, right? And, and it's just sadly true. We, I'm just thinking about even within the church, how many times when a crisis happens, right? We call the insurance people, we call outside people to come in and give us advice, mm-hmm. we call our lawyer, we call all kinds of people before we pray, mm-hmm. right? So our initial thing is, if hey, pray. something happened, can we all get together and pray about this? Nope, 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 nope. Instead, it's, hey, we gotta react to this, Yeah, it's right? a reflex. God is saying, don't react to things. Right? Don't react to things. I've told you how it's going to be. I've told you that these people who are doing evil and wicked, they're not going to prosper. But you're just looking around you and you see because they're prospering for a second, oh, well, that must be the right thing to do. That The problem is these people's hearts are being drawn away from God because they're looking at the wicked and going, well, God doesn't work. Right? Again, 
We've all been there. We all feel that way, right? But it's discipline that have us sit down and go like, I know what this looks like. I know what this feels like. I know what this is. Let's look at it, though, from God's perspective first, yeah. right? I, I am going through 10 things right now where if I just went based on my feelings, people would be in deep trouble starting with me, <laughs> right? But I don't get to just go by my feelings. I'm, I'm, I'm clinging to promises that God said you know it's like i just we just we think that somehow again promises yeah right period yep claim them yeah happening Mm -hmm. you don't maybe not maybe you don't know when maybe you do know when right guaranteed black and white right you cannot say maybe to that exactly unless you think that promises me maybe then you got whole other problems but like so exactly that. So if God's, if God's set in stone plan for you, mm-hmm. right? Say you get an illness, yeah. right? He knows how it's going to go. He knows how it's going to, he's going to let it go. He knows what's going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say you're going to die. Mm-hmm. Okay. From this illness. What, if he knows the outcome and he knows what is going to happen and he has a plan, then what? what do you possibly have to lose by asking him first? Like we ha- we think that we so much completely control everything yep. that if, oh my gosh, if I wait five minutes to do this mm-hmm. and, and ask God first, then it's going to be worse. Because if I don't get to the hospital, yep. if I don't do this thing, then... You know, the doctor said, the doctor said, you got to do it as quick as possible and you got to do it and you got to do it. So clearly, um, if that's true and that's what God wants me to do, then he's somehow going to punish me by spending time praying about it. Yeah. So uh, I, maybe he'd save you all the drama. Well, see, that's what I, I was just thinking for probably for the first time in my life. Right. Like uh, if if God's plan is for me to be healed or not be healed. Yeah, it's going to happen. What's the purpose of going to the doctor? Right. So you, you're going to go through this entire process and nothing's going to happen and you're not going to get it fixed. God's already decided what the outcome is. Right. Right. So are there times like this is not anti-doctors. This is why would we not pray ahead of time? Well, right. That's what I'm see. saying. And so if, if, you, if you're going to die, you're going to die either way. Whether you go through 55 doctors or you don't go through 55 doctors, maybe he would have you die quicker or something. I have no idea. Maybe... He would reward you and say, well, guess what? The outcome's not changing, but we're going to make it easier and less stressful on you and your family and less painful. Well, we talked about this. Because you put me first. We talked about this with Moses, right? We talked about the fact that, that poor Moses, the the outcome, the result of his his hitting a rock, not talking to it, was you're not going to the promised land. Yeah. And that was near the beginning of a 40-year stretch. He went through that entire time. God gets to the end of it, and he doesn't relent. God doesn't say, oh, Moses, I'm sorry I told you that. You know, yep, you're going to go to the promise. And he said, no, you're not going to the promise. Right. He's not right? kidding nothing when he says you anything. Can do, right. Nothing you're going to do is going to fix this. Nothing you're going to do right. is going to stop this from happening. you gotta, you got to keep walking through, though. Yeah. Right? If, we're, if we're waiting for healing that's never going to come through doctors, man, that, that's, a, that's a waste of time. Yeah. Right? If we're, if we're waiting for healing that's never going to come. Mm-hmm. Right. If God says get your stuff in order, the, the, you know your right. life's gonna is gonna come to an end. Like these are important things. Yeah. What if Moses didn't listen to God and he started, you know, prepping his uh, his house over in the Promised Land? <laughs> what if Moses had just yeah. decided he was gonna walk yeah. with the people? And he's like, yeah, God, we're, we're not gonna talk about this. Like, yeah. These things are. Who knows? Yeah. These things are, are are super important, right? But we we the the problem here is the people are supposed to be keeping their eyes focused on God. And instead of keeping their eyes focused on God, they're focusing in on outside stuff. Again, I'm not proud enough to say, but that's exactly where my problem is. Every conversation you and I or anybody else has that is that way in nature, it's because my focus is on what's around, not what's yeah. up. Right? I, I, I shared with somebody this morning, listen, keep your focus up. Keep your focus. I, I know you don't understand what's going on. I know you don't know what's happening. I know it doesn't feel like God's doing anything. I don't know. I know it doesn't feel like God's anywhere around. Keep your focus up because that's what the enemy wants to do. Yeah. You you brought something up that's not a new concept, but just I've been on it lately because of you know because you uh, challenged 
Mute. That's a nice way of saying it, right? But we we're talking about like, man, there's so many times where we step into the swirling winds of the hurricane mm. rather than resting in the eye. God promises rest in the eye. It's going to swirl all around you. All around you it's going to swirl. But if you rest in the eye, right, you're going to be peaceful. It can be that way all around you. See, I don't know. See, I want to dissect that further because I don't know that you would necessarily rest in mm-hmm. the eye. Because, like, my vision of that original thing that I said to you was in a tornado. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I pictured, you know, the eye of a tornado is small. Yep. Yeah, usually, okay. unless you got a five thing that's, like, mile wide. But, like, you know, it's a small thing. And what I, what I envisioned was, you know, you're safe and you can look up and see the blue sky. Right? You yep. can see God. But you got to be careful. You got to keep your arms in. Right? So, like, you can't fully rest. Mm -hmm. You can feel safe and maybe at peace, but, like, you can't can't just chillax. Because once you chillax and you lay back, like, your arm gets sucked in or your leg gets sucked in. Like, I was, like, literally picturing, like, a... Like a hug, almost. Like you gotta, you gotta keep all your limbs inside the car, keep your hands and you're feet safe in the, in the ride, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, so, so, like, you can say you're resting, but like, I don't see it as rest. So I would agree with you, and I would add to that, and I would say you can dissect that. Here's, well, I would say to you that the, the deal with the hurricane is to get to the eye. What do you have to do? You gotta, get you gotta go through, through right? So it's not. Yeah. God's not saying no. Like He's saying like, listen, easy. this initial thing happens yeah. to you. You gotta go through that part. But when you get to the center of yeah. me. Where I am, then keep your hands. See, my vision was just poof. I'm there. Yeah, so, well, and, it you know, wasn't what, like, though? oh, I gotta go through the See, pain to get to it. But but I, but when in yours, you were talking about a tornado, right? And a tornado does hop up, and it on does you. drop down, yeah, and good. so it is very possible to be able. Yeah. And I, and I feel like there are times where that is what's happened, yeah. right? We didn't go through anything. All of a sudden, poof, you know, the house has dropped on us, right? Yeah. And like, okay, what do we, what do we do? Right? What do we do with all of this stuff? And the key is that we do exactly what God says that we, he's he, he's going to do what he says he's going to do. We need to do what he's asked us to do. Yeah. We need to we need to just stop, pay attention, and say, wait a second, wait, wait, wait. I, I see it all going around. That's what he's saying to them. Is hey, you're looking at all this stuff and saying there there's no purpose, there's no value, there's no benefit in doing things God's way. And well, every yeah, person that God's I know of, takes time. But everybody I know of has been there at some point. Where yeah. they're questioning. For sure. Listen, I could have this now instantaneously. You know, it, it's so funny because we're running into people right now who are buying houses, right? Housing market is crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I'd rather crazy. sell a bunch of houses than buy a bunch right. of houses right, right? Now. People are paying way oh more. My gosh. Imagine if you're in the middle of this and God says, just wait. Just, just yeah. can you can you just wait and be patient? I have the perfect house for you. But but you're looking around and you get, you can feel people getting antsy. I'm not gonna get a house. I'm not gonna get a house. I'm not gonna get a house. And you're watching the money. And... Yeah. But, but what... the market's gonna crash. God, don't you know? But what if the market does crash and all of a sudden that perfect house that you wanted? Hundred grand less. Now you're gonna get it for a hundred grand less. Now all of a sudden God's the greatest God in the world. Yeah. Right. But we're <laughs> looking around at the circumstances and God, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay five hundred thousand dollars for a two hundred thousand dollar house. No, no, probably not. Right. If you if you if you wait, and if if that is the case, God's going to give you the five hundred thousand dollars, right? He's going to give you the ability to pay it, right? That's important. We just don't trust him. I mean, that's just the bottom line. We don't trust him, and I think I think it would. Yeah, God's promises tend to take a while. Yep. Uh, I don't know why. I guess it's just his process and how he does things and. He does, again, I, I, and every time I wonder and I try to figure this out, I, and I brought it up on Friday night too, like two-thirds of this book is prophecy. Like how many, how, we're still waiting for things in this book, yeah, we're right? We're still waiting. Like, yeah. but you're like, well, why? Like, well, for your own good. Like he tells us ahead of time on purpose. Like you talked about surprises, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, a lot of things he doesn't want to be a surprise because he knows we're not going to be able to take it. See. Right. So, but we don't let pe- we don't let God come into our lives in the intimate way that we have our own personal promises that we know we're waiting for. Like, how many people, like, really, 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 like, really, that you know can like? Okay, we know a lot of church people, but like, the majority of people cannot walk around and be like, you know, 
God told me in conversation that this, I'm going to have this, and this is going to happen for me, and I'm going to have this, yep. this, this, and this. It's usually when people are really in tune with God that he tells them things. So, like, this is why the majority, who is who he's talking to, obviously, is in this situation because they don't talk to God. Yeah. So they think it's vain and it's pointless. Mm -hmm. They don't get any promises told to them, so they don't believe in any being fulfilled. And they're just like, well, what does it matter? Well, and then you, when you look at that and you put that with the rest or with verse 15 and now we call arrogant blessed evil doers not only prosper but they put god to the test and they escape mm -hmm. uh, uh, man we we have seen this non-stop we have seen this people raising their fists to heaven shaking it and saying you know god is not god and they're changing his word saying god is for things that he's not he's he's about things that he's not they're changing the definition of love they're changing definitions of forgiveness and repentance and yeah. things that he's called us to and they're just saying you know god you're not in charge anymore like literally we're watching people in churches and outside churches every day usurp the authority of god and say this is who god is and the second that you say that you're basically saying i'm god yeah right they're putting god to the test god says you're not going to get away with that. Yeah. I think, like, I just read, uh, I just read Lazarus and the Rich Man again. Yeah. Right? And I yeah. really, like, like, honed in on the part of, like, you know, he said, you had all the riches and all this stuff, and now you're, you know, you're suffering and you're mm -hmm. in pain and torture and everything. And Lazarus was tormented on earth, and now he is being comforted. Yeah. You know? And it's like... <sighs> People are like, well, what the heck? Like, what, you know, like, mm -hmm. w w what kind of God, yep. right? That's like, why did Lazarus have to suffer his whole life? And and why do we walk around suffering our whole lives then and watch all these people, you know, have instant gratification and get away with it? And I think we don't understand the extreme... Whatever. I don't know what how I want to say this, but the like I don't I don't know how I want to say this. Like how good and how horrible yep. like heaven and hell are. Like I think we Perfect. just think like, okay, it's just like, you know, a peachy version of this or uh, you know, an uncomfortable version mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. And it's like I think maybe he lets us suffer and maybe he lets us go through all these things because the payoff is astronomically greater than we can imagine and i think he lets them have their whatever's right now that they want that they want to worship right now because the damnation is greater than they can imagine like i think we don't get how extreme it is we don't we, we just think like oh great and all oh, bad but we don't it's i think it's mind-blowing well, I think the rest of the chapter talks about that, right? The yeah. rest of what you read talks about God is, there is a remnant. God is going to save that remnant. God is going to remind us that there's a big difference between the righteous and the wicked, which is exactly what you just said, right? If we're not careful, we lose sight of heaven and hell, and that's the end game, right? Again, there are people who run races just to run. They like running. Okay. That's you guys me. are weird, right? <laughs> But there are, That's there, <laughs> like, I love playing tennis. I never competitively played tennis, you know, on my tennis team at school or against other people. Where my goal was, I just want to play tennis. Yeah, that's different. It's, that's a one on one thing. You want to beat the person. Right, but Paul, <laughs> but Paul reminds us of this when he says yeah, everybody, everybody runs, runs the race in such a way as to win, yeah. which means you have the end game. Yeah. But, yeah, if you're joining, if if you're getting in the Boston Marathon and your only goal is to finish the race, there's super great value in that, right? Just getting allowed to register for the Boston Marathon is right. an accomplishment. Just, thing. just we have a friend who just got, she just qualified for the Boston Marathon. Yeah, she gets that to is run a, it. that is huge. It's a fantastic thing, right? But if that's your end game, then you're gonna fall, you're gonna fall short of what the real goal is. You can set arbitrary goals. So if you say. Somewhere, I just want to be a better person. 
Oh. Right? I'm doing Christianity because I want to be a better person. It's like saying, mm-hmm. I'm going to do a diet because I want I want to eat a little healthier. No, you, you need to have goals. Right. right? Just eating healthier means that, well, when I don't want to eat healthier, I'm going to have the brownie or the cupcake and all those yeah, things. Yeah, but that's like making Christianity sound like a hobby. And that's like, the whole point, right? It's Again, Country Club talked about this. God's saying, like, listen, you, you'll make it a hobby. And when you want something, you remember me just like you said and all these things. And, but God says, no, no, there's a real... There's a real prize at the end of this. It's called heaven. And those who don't attain it. This is not a race you're just getting just to run. No. This is a race you have to run it in a way to win. Right? Again, is that perfection? No. Is that be like anybody else? No. You run it the way you run it to win. Right? The, the truth is that in God's economy, you might run this race in three minutes. And I might run it in 30 years, right? <laughs> yeah. There are people who run their race and they only get 6, 8, 10, 15 years on this. Some only get minutes yeah. right on this. Plan it. But you run your race in such a way as to win. And God says, I'm going to establish the difference between the wicked and the righteous. Right? Don't lose sight of that just because of what's going around. The enemy looks at us and he says... Man, Summer, the easiest way to get you off track is just to get you so caught up in all the other stuff Mm -hmm. on what you don't have. Mm -hmm. God says, pay attention to what you do have. The enemy says, I'm going to remind you every day of what you lost. God says, let me tell you what you found. Right? It's just, it's a mindset. It's constantly, right? You were complaining over here because you didn't, you didn't have love. Now I gave it to you over here, but now you're going to complain about the parameters of it. Right? And God says, you're complaining over here because you didn't have money. And now you're complaining over here because I gave you a good job. But now you're complaining because you have to go to work. Right? You didn't have any friends. Now you have too many friends. And all the saga that goes along with having friends. Right? You, you wanted a church. Now you got a church. Well, now you got to be part of the church family. I don't. We're, we're, we're constantly doing this. Right? And we're looking at We're saying, God, I, I, it, it, your way has no earthly benefit. Well, no kidding. Yeah, well, duh. It's not supposed to. He it's tells supposed you to have a heavenly benefit. Got to know all this stuff. Right. And, and again. He doesn't want you to be comfortable here. Exactly. Just because God Sorry. does God does bless people on this planet. Sure. Right? So you look at Job and you say, was Job the, the richest, wealthiest man because only because he, he was righteous and nobody else was? I don't know. I, like We make it sound like that. We make it sound like the only reason was because he was Job was a perfect man. We don't know anything before, and we don't know anything after that Job did with his money and all of his stuff. We just know the Bible says he was a righteous man, and here's what happened. Yeah. But we look at these things, and we just tie it all together. If I'm doing right things, I ought to be blessed like crazy and get all this stuff. Right? I, you know what? It's fantastic. I've had 20-some different horses over the course of my life. The vast majority of them, all but one, I have paid literally nothing for, right? One, I bought the mom and got the baby out of the deal. So really, technically, really it was paid a, half. Yeah, I paid half for it, right? <laughs> I wouldn't get one. And <laughs> and I gave the mom away, and you know that you're like, oh god, it's all this stuff, right? But you know why I get horses? Because I get the horses at the end of their lives that people don't want anymore. Mm. Right, and so now you're 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 looking at that and saying, wait a second, it looks like I've got all these horses, but all this stuff. You're nursing home for horses. The the problem is you're really taking care. Like it it doesn't, it doesn't work all that way. With great blessing comes great responsibility. God is going to, and we got the tenant thing and the story where oh man, if you're faithful with a little, I'm going to give you lots. Lots in God's thing is a little bit like soon. Th- those two words are really similar to me in nature. I'm going to give you lots. Yeah. What is that? A dollar extra? I mean, in God's economy, that could be a house instead of just a box enough to cover you. It could be. You know anything. what I mean? Like we 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 just have such a skewed, proud version of what we. Which is what which is what God says here. But what He says at the end is, I'm going to distinguish, and you're going to get to know the difference. Yeah. You might want to choose wisely, be on the right side. Yeah. Right. There's this whole concept about being on the right side of history. <laughs> You might want to think about that, right? But what we need to start thinking about is, listen, if we're asking God for all this stuff, is he not living up to our definition of all this stuff or is he actually not giving us things? There's a big difference between God saying, 
I'm going to give you well, shelter. What's our definition? Of right. If, I, if mine is, I want a mansion, I want a castle for my house, mm-hmm. and God says, hey, uh, why don't you go live with this person for a, a little bit? No, that's not what I asked for. Right? But the wicked, they can rip people off and look at the houses they get yeah, or mansions giant, they get. I'm, I'm fighting to keep my car running and I'm doing this great ministry. These people are doing nothing and look at what cars they get to drive. Mm-hmm. They, there's a big difference. But as a Christian, the enemy constantly wants us looking down yep. horizontal and God wants us looking up. Yep. That's what I said. They have their reward. I think we've given a whole bunch to chew on. Look, at you got me going preaching. I know, and I could even I could do a whole lot more because I think verse sixteen is very intriguing. But. All right, so are we going to just say we misspoke and we'll hit it again next time, <sighs> or do you want to hit it? No, we'll let them go. Okay, we'll let them go, and we'll do chapter four next time. But we'll look at but verse review. sixteen. Review, yeah, review. Chap- the end of chapter. That's how we got out of it. We did finish it. Yes. We did finish it. We read it all and we talked about it all. I just, you know, it was one little part. We'll talk about it over lunch. So this is you where we get to hear. Stay tuned next for the next episode of Friday Night where you will hear Summer start with verse 16. <laughs> Bye, guys. We hope you have a great Friday night with Jesus and whoever you're with. We love you. See you next week.